Good morning on this hot summer day with looking forward to the 4th of July holiday. We're going to be up in the low hundreds. Ooh, it got hot fast here, probably where you are as well. Today we're going to talk about a topic that um, has everything to do with safety. And it goes to self-reliance and emergency preparedness. Um, we of course, are part of the older generation. And therefore, for a number of years, we have been getting information from ARP, which I think is, I'm not sure what it stands for, but the RP is retired people. So we started... American Association of Retired People, I think. That's what I'm guessing, too. Um, we've been getting these since we turned about 55, so it's been a long time. They do a really good job of alerting people of our generation to a whole lot of things because um, statistically, the older we get, the more likely we are to have um, accidents at home, the more likely we are to fall prey to um, shysters. And so th they have done a really great job in helping educate this generation, our generation of older folks. What they had to say in this particular um, version of their newsletter is applicable across age groups. And that is why I'm going to pick and choose some of the things that came out in this particular edition of their newsletter to share with you over the course of, I don't know, three or four videos. The focus is basically on safety. And today we're going to start, most of them are, will be coming in micro moments. But today I'm going to do a full-size video to kind of introduce you to these ideas. One of the things that they talk about here is how to fall, if you, if you find yourself falling, how to fall so you do not injure critical points, shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knees. And Jim and I were going to demonstrate that for you. Jim was going to be the guinea pig and we were going to set out a mattress, but we just decided it's not worth it the risk. Jim has already had one shoulder replacement and we don't want anything to happen. So if you happen to have this edition of the newsletter for ARP, in, and the, it is, this is the cover, it says how to stay safe this summer, but really their safety it, it, um, ideas apply to year round. But look up that particular article on how to fall safely as if you can do what they say in the split second it takes you to hit the ground. But at least your mind can be prepared with some options. So take a look at that. The first topic we're going to address is keeping yourself safe by reorganizing your wallet. In the event, in the very unlikely event, that your wallet is stolen from you, and it happens, it does happen, we all know that, there are things that we can do to arrange our wallets right now to minimize the devastating effect of losing our wallets. And so I'm going to go through their points one at a time. There are 10 things, 10 hints. Now this is an old wallet that I have. It is empty. It has lots of card slots. It has a place for your driver's license or your state ID card. It has a place for a checkbook. I never carry a checkbook now. And it has more card slots here and a place for bills. And then in the back, some change. I've had this for probably 10 years. I retired it about five years ago, but I hang on to stuff. I shouldn't, but I do. Things have changed dramatically since this wallet was designed and built. And so keep in mind how different things are from this setup of a wallet to what I'm going to share with you from this article. What they suggest, first of all, is that we take everything out of our wallets, everything, and then we, we organize it on a countertop with like things together, receipts, credit cards, health cards, whatever else, whatever else, cash. And then we start going through these piles one by one. So the first thing they say, remove all old receipts, all business, car all business cards, all single store credit cards. So if you have a credit card from say Dillard's, don't keep it with you. 
and then any rewards cards, anything that you get points for or whatever. And keep those in a place that when you go to visit a particular place and want that card, then just put it in your wallet temporarily. Keep things out of your wallet that would give a, a potential thief more information about where you shop and what your habits are. So that's the first thing. The next thing is to prune your cash. Don't carry a whole ton of cash. Gone are the days when we need to have a lot of cash with us anyway. I hardly carry any cash anymore. If I need cash, I just nudge Jim. <laughs> but even he doesn't carry cash the way he used to. And so prune your cash down to just what you need. I carry usually a $20 bill and that's it. And, um, and then if you, if you want to, if you have a hiding place in your wallet or some other place to, to uh, stash some emergency cash, you can certainly do that. Then for those of us that have Medicare cards, they strongly suggest that we do not carry our Medicare cards with us, except when we are going to our medical appointments where that will be needed. And the reason for that is that if someone steals our wallet, they can take our Medicare number and um, issue fraudulent claims and get cash back. And so I think that is really a good safety precaution. I don't carry mine anyway. Uh, next is don't carry a blank check with you. I don't even carry checks. I just opened an account not too long ago and they asked what design of checks I wanted. I didn't even get any checks. Gone are the days when most of us even ever need to write checks and don't carry a blank check with you. You all know what information a thief could get from a single blank check. Your name, your address, possibly your phone number, most certainly the name of your bank and your account number. And why would you want to do that? A debit card can take the place of a check in most cases. And so that's something to consider. And then they recommend that we carry only one credit card and maybe one debit card. And that is it. Choose one and only one. If you fill up all of these slots with all of your credit cards, and a lot of us have a lot of credit cards and debit cards. We have mostly debit cards. I think we only have one credit card that we carry. In fact, Jim carries it. I don't even carry it. Imagine what a thief could do with all of these cards. A lot of times thieves work with groups of other thieves to where as soon as one of them scores somebody's wallet, they pass out the cards to everybody else and they scatter and they go to stores or order online immediately before a fraud alert can be issued to you and spend a lot of money. And sometimes we can get that money back and sometimes we can't. But nevertheless, they have scored all of that at your expense. So pare down your credit cards and your debit cards that you carry. Also, with your credit cards, photocopy, take a picture of the front and the back of your credit cards and leave those pictures on your camera or print them out and keep them safe in your files at your home. Um, your health cards as well. Anything for getting quick information in case your wallet is stolen, you will be able to contact the institutions where your cards are from and let them know that your card has been stolen. So that's a, a good thing to know too. They also suggest that we carry a multi-tool that is the size and shape of a credit card. I didn't know what that was. And so I went up on Amazon and this is what it is. It is a card shaped in the very same size as a credit card. Here is a ruler. Here are hex bolt. Um, you can undo hex bolts. Here is a bottle opener, all different kinds of things that we can use in case of emergency. So that might be a handy thing. I'm going to get one. And this was a new idea to me and I think it is a great idea for safety. A repurposed Swiss Army knife. Exactly. <laughs> the, the new Swiss Army knife. The new generation of Swiss Army knives. <laughs> Point number seven is to take all of the photos out of your wallet. A lot of us who are grandparents love to carry photos of our grandchildren. The more a thief knows about you and your family, 
the more effective his fraud will be, his or her fraud, against you and your family. So don't give them any more information. And, um, and we can store our photos now on our phones, which makes it very convenient. Very, very important, never, ever store your social security card in your wallet. That is an open door to steal your identity. So keep that social security under lock and key in your home. Um, it is easy to open lines of credit, do all kinds of things if you have someone else's social security card. So don't leave yourself open to that possibility. And never ever carry a house key in your wallet because if you carry a blank check or any other thing with your address on it, the thief now knows where you live and has a key to your house. So what is left in your wallet? Well, not much, which is why one of these big wallets is no longer necessary. What you will have left is one credit card, one debit card, whatever health insurance cards you need to have, a state ID and that and and a modest sum of money and that is about it. Now this particular wallet is a little Faraday cage. It is an RDIF um, wallet that has a, either aluminum foil or carbon in it to where that the signal given off by the magnetic strips on your cards cannot be read by anyone with a reader. And that was more of a threat, oh, probably five to 10 years ago than it is now. It's not so much of a threat now. So I want to show you the alternative now that I use. I have a wallet. It is a very skinny wallet now with pretty much just those basic things in it. So it doesn't need to be very big. But I use my phone mostly for a lot of things that I used to use my wallet for. I have it, this case that goes over my phone that has a door in the back that is magnetic. And you would hardly even know that that door is there. And in my little secret compartment here, I carry, usually this is a $20 bill, but I just cashed it the other day and I'm carrying a 10 instead. And then well, I carry one debit card and, um, and my driver's license right back in my phone, plus this $10 bill, which is usually a $20 bill. And that's it, because I can pay now with my phone. I have my credit cards. No, I don't have credit cards. I have my debit cards all recorded in my phone. So I can use Apple Pay and just hold my phone over in, in most places, just hold my phone next to their reader and can pay with whatever card I wish. And so we can use technology to help keep us safe. The trick is then to not let your phone get stolen too. But I'm very cautious about that because I only carry one, but I do carry my driver's license, um, which is a little worrisome. But then you have to have your driver's license in case somebody might want to give you a speeding ticket Never me, of course. That is the basis of the article that appeared in this ARP issue of the June newsletter for this year. I hope that this has been helpful. And take some time. If you haven't already slimmed down your wallet, now is really a good time to do it. More people are out and about in the summertime, and that means more crooks, more thieves, more charlatans are at work in the summertime when the weather is good. So take some time and do it now and be safe. So thank you for joining us and I hope this information has been helpful to you. And we will continue with this uh, safety um, series uh, in our micro moments over the next oh, couple of months off and on. So thank you so much for being with us and we'll see you very soon at another video.